Hey everyone, Sam Davidson here with MEA Worldwide at the 23rd Annual Hollywood Film Awards here in Beverly Hills. Tonight, some of Hollywood's biggest stars are being honored for their work this year, including Charlize Theron, Laura Dern, Antonio Banderas, Shia LaBeouf, and so many more. You're not going to want to miss it, so stay tuned. I just watched Actually Book Smart for the first time recently. Oh, thank you for watching it. Seen it a couple times since. Um, so as an actor, what did directing this film teach you, not only about acting, but about representing women in film? It taught me that it's not hard to represent women in film. It's just about the way you go through the process. You can hire in a way that is thoughtful. You can cast in a way that is thoughtful. You can write in a way that is thoughtful. It is not a uh, difficult thing to make our films more representative. It's just a little bit of effort to change the way the paradigm has been set. So I, I felt excited to be an example of that. You know, it was, a, it was a wonderful environment because it felt like we were modeling for the future that we want. Absolutely. And any other films you're directing? Yeah, I'm directing one in the spring called Don't Worry Darling, which is a thriller. So um, from what I really, of course, started loving you from was the David Lynch films and, of course, Twin Peaks and all of that. So can you tell me in what way like he still helps guide your career and if you plan on working with him again soon? I will work with him whenever he tells me to show up. He is my maestro and my family, and I'm the luckiest girl in the world that he somehow found me as a... Seven, almost 17 year old and it's been a life journey so far and um, he's with me every day even when I'm not working with him when he has nothing to do with the film I'm on um, because any bravery or boldness um, that's required of me um, really really comes from the foundation of, of David pushing you in the way he does. Um, from that thing you do until now, which is one of my favorite movies, how do you think that your career actually progressed and where was it that you decided, I'm gonna win this Lifetime Achievement Award that you're winning tonight? I never had that moment. <laughs> um, so that's, this was a, a really nice surprise. I guess, you know, for me, I tried to take every role and try to do as much as I possibly could with what I had. Mm -hmm. A defining moment for me was definitely when I got to do Monster and I feel like my career became, I could breathe a little bit more. People were handing me things that were more challenging, things that were outside of my comfort zone. And that was a really nice moment in my career and it's, and it's continued and now that I'm producing I get to do that for myself. I get to challenge myself, I get to work with people who I know will challenge me. And it's, um, there hasn't been a day that I've, that I've not loved this job as much as I did back then. <laughs> Thank you. So obviously the story of Harriet is always important to be told, yes. but why in 2019, almost 2020, do you think it's more important than ever? Well, because I think the time we're living in calls for something that, that gives people inspiration, mm -hmm. and women in general, women of color, shows that we are strong and powerful and can change the face of the world. I think now is when we need to see it mm -hmm. uh, because we're in a place where things can feel a little bit tough and things feel a little bit hopeless but to see a story of hope and perseverance and strength and love uh, is probably going to help people see themselves a little bit more yeah. like they have a little bit more agency in their, in their lives so yeah and so what kind of research did you do are there any kind of ancestors family members that you've talked to reached out to um so i i mean uh casey worked a lot on the research and reached out to many historians so i did the same thing and i went to the african-american museum talked to the historian there made sure i got some information myself um physical training because it is an, an incredibly physical piece to do uh, and i wanted to be as close to her connected as i possibly could spiritual um, I'm searching because her faith is one of the main things that led her to do the work that she did. So I wanted to find out more about my faith, figure out where I lay with it, um, so I could be more authentic in that in that space. Um, and I, I've just recently we managed to meet the, the her ancestors as well, which has been incredible. And the books that have been written about her have been amazing. So a lot of different things, but it all comes together to to tell the story. So we're really excited because you're being honored for the screenplay for Netflix's new film that's not out yet, Two Popes. Uh, tell me a little bit about the film because we don't know that much about it yet. Well, it's um, it's unusual. It's a story of uh, two old men in dresses uh, discussing God. Mm -hmm. um, and it started out uh, on a trip to Rome uh, and... Uh, I was happened to be in St. Peter's Square, and Pope Francis was doing happened to be doing an open air mass, 
and I started to connect the dots and I said, hang on, there's, there's, not, there's not just this guy, there's another Pope as well. When's the last time there's been two living Popes? Because the previous one resigned. And I did some Googling and found out it's been 700 years since the Pope resigned, 500 years since we've had two Popes. And I went, what's up with that? Um, how did that happen? Why did that happen? Something so unprecedented. And the story emerged from that exploration. So again, you are being honored tonight. What do you think it is that's so special that's gonna connect with audiences so much about this story? Um, this one surprised me. When I, I remember when I started writing this one, I often think or have a sense of what the audience might be for it. But um, this is such an unusual subject matter. It's about a progressive and a conservative. And, and they're debating and trying to find a middle ground. And I think it's resonating with people because there's a broader conversation happening in the world today in such a divided time where politics is so entrenched in different positions that the middle ground has been sort of, it's kind of collapsed. And, and so I think people are seeing it not just as a theological movie or a religious movie, but, it, but actually speaking to the, you know, the, one of the real dilemmas of our time. You are partners, writing partners. How often do you guys butt heads about what's going to be put in and how off script as far as like storylines you guys are going to go? Is it ever Did like... You just call us butt heads? Yeah. <laughs> Did I call you butt heads? Yeah. Butt heads? <laughs> we we no. tend to have one argument a movie that, that stops the day. You know, where we go, I, we just can't move forward until somebody gives up. But we've had a long career with each other and we've realized that um, there are a lot of bites at that apple, so it's kind of easy to give in because if the idea it works, it works, and everybody wins. If it doesn't, it'll be pretty obvious pretty soon. Right. And we, you know, we we test a lot of things out, so we have the knowledge that, like, you know, well, we're just doing it. This is just today's version. Yeah. You know, if you like your idea that much, bring it in tomorrow. We can do that one then. So, and also. 99% of the time you come back the next day and you look at what you were arguing about and it is ridiculous. <laughs> like it's, you know, no, Ant-Man shouldn't shrink that big, he should shrink that big. And <laughs> well, the arguments are at about 3.34 yeah. in the afternoon. Right. That means you should stop. It's a blood sugar <laughs> issue, usually. What a feat and an accomplishment to direct the film that you did. It was absolutely beautiful. Thank you so much, thank you. I've seen it three times. It's nearly as much as me. <laughs> Not quite. But yeah, oh, that's great, thank you, thank you. So it's an interesting thing because most stories that are told this way, the person is dead or very, very old. And Elton yes. John is very much alive and well. So yeah. was it a challenge for you to do this, but also thinking he has more story to tell? Yeah, I mean, we take a, a very particular period in his life, you know, uh, up to a certain point mm -hmm. that, that the script's always dealt with and, and um, and that, and that script was born of conversations with Elton and David, the producer, his husband. So uh, I knew that we, we were kind of bookending the story, if you like. And of course, you know, Elton has gone on to do many more things, uh, amazing things, since uh, where the film stops. But yes, it's a responsibility. But what he brilliantly did is he gave us freedom to create the film that we wanted to create. Um, he knew what we were doing at all times, of course. But to have the... The authority uh, of him behind us kind of really gave us strength to our arm, if you, if you get what I mean. You know, we, it meant we were very authentic and we always str strove for authenticity, both in Taron's performance and, and how we used the music and how the, the makeup and hair played into it. I mean, the makeup and hair, Lizzie George Yu is, is winning an award tonight as well. So these things, you know, uh, are all very exciting and gratifying for us, yeah. We have had an amazing time here at the 23rd Annual Hollywood Film Awards here in Beverly Hills. We hope that you guys have enjoyed these interviews. If you'd like to see more like them, please go to our website, download the app for free, or subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll see you next time.